I would say Houston, actually, if you ask James Harden who he would rather face, he'd rather face the Warriors with KD. Because when KD plays, and Warriors never been a great stamina guy, what's the knock on him forever? He melts down at the end of seasons. He looks tired. When KD leaves, did you watch the Steph offense? Running, cutting. Harden was chasing him all fourth quarter. It's not that Harden was off in the fourth quarter. He was gassed. It's not that he was missing shots. Hell, he wasn't even taking them. He took three all quarter. He's averaged almost nine a quarter. <laughs> He's averaged eight in the fourth quarter. He took three, made two. The KD Warriors are more static, and long-term, they're better. But Harden and Chris Paul, get your track shoes on because the Steph Warriors are running all over the floor. They have to because they, they lose a prolific score. They've got to make more screens, cut harder, Pass better, space better, get the ball up the floor quicker. And I thought it turned Harden. It was a track meet. He didn't want to be involved. He's never been a sprinter. He's never been a sprinter. And that's why this morning everybody's like, oh, it's over for Golden State. No, they're just different. We've got statistical analysis. With Kevin Durant, they're the best team in basketball. Without Kevin Durant, they won 73 games, a title, and came within a Kyrie Irving jump shot of winning a second team, second title. So with or without KD, they've been great. They've been dominant. 73 wins without him. Steph wins without him. If not for a Kyrie jumper, they win twice and get 73 wins out. And then they add him, and they're really great. But it's two different teams. Draymond is energized when KD's off the floor. Feels like it's, it's Steph... And Draymond's team. You can feel the energy. He talks more. He's feistier. And this is a concept basketball fans struggle with. And the other reason Golden State's a dynasty and Houston's just really good, because Golden State loses the best basketball player in the world. And they've got a two, Steph, and a three, Clay, and a four, Draymond, and a five, Iggy, and a six, Looney, Championship teams have layers of excellence, just like championship companies have layers of excellence. It's not just Alabama's defense. It's not just Tom Brady. And the reason Houston is just good and not a dynasty is KD leaves, Harden struggles, and they're not the same team. If Harden's not great, and they may win this series, but Harden will have to be great. If Harden isn't great, Houston's is a good, good, good team. When Harden's on, when Harden's scoring, they can be amazing. But last night is why Houston's just a good team and the Warriors are a dynasty. People forget how good, how good Michael Jordan's Bulls were. Scottie Pippen was a top 50 player. Dennis Rodman was the best rebounder ever. Kukoc was the best European. Steve Kerr at the time was the best shooter in the league. Jim Paxson wasn't far behind. Ron Harper was a 25-point-a-game player who went to be a reserve. They had the best coach. Golden State's got layer after layer after layer. They were a better team, and I'm not saying long-term, but they're a different team, and last night a better team than the second-best team in the league without KD. Steve Kerr afterwards. Liverpool yesterday came out with just one of the great wins in soccer history. And after the match, uh, their manager, Jurgen Klopp, said, our boys are f***ing giants. That's what he said. And uh, I know how he feels. So I apologize to my mom, who uh, is probably watching, but our guys are f***ing giants. Like, that was an unbelievable victory tonight. It really was. And that's why they're a dynasty, and Houston's just really good. Houston, uh-oh, KD's out. We've got to switch up. Couldn't do it. Golden State lost the top guy. And for like seven minutes, you're like, oh, I like this new style. It's actually kind of more fluid and fun. That's the difference between the Utah Jazz and the Bulls and the good Sonics and Blazers teams and the Bulls and the Showtime Lakers and those really good Nick teams and those pretty good Indiana Pacer teams. Layers, second gear, third gear, fourth gear, bench, coach. 
That was impressive last night. Let me shift to this. Yeah, yeah, I was wrong on that Boston Celtic thing. Yeah, Milwaukee's way better. Bench is better. Stronger, longer, taller, more passionate. Uh, Kyrie Irving thing never worked. Two years, didn't work. He doesn't fit with a coach. He doesn't really fit with a roster. And here's another thing. He doesn't really fit with the city. I always thought that mattered. Michael Jordan felt Chicago. City of big shoulders. Michael was big. Oprah was there. Siskel and Ebert. Industry leaders. There's no better fit in the history of basketball than Magic in L.A. Glamour player, glamour city. Kyrie doesn't even feel like Boston. Larry Bird did. Tough, gritty clutch to lunch pail city. By the way, Kevin Garnett to me felt like Boston. Trash talker, frugal, tough, don't get in his face, intimidating. Paul Pierce, overachiever, gritty, played defense. Julian Edelman embodies. Tom Brady has a supermodel wife. He's a grinder watching tape. Kyrie just doesn't feel like Boston. We already know he doesn't fit with his coach. We already know he doesn't fit with his roster. But I always thought it, I always thought it felt like Detroit's good teams in the NBA are tough because Detroit's tough. And the 70 Steelers, the Steel Town USA, they were tough. They may have had a glamorous quarterback. They won with defense. Dallas teams, always a little flashy with Aikman, Tony Romo, and Dak. I always feel there's a perfect harmony with the all-time great teams. They almost feel like their city. Kyrie doesn't feel like Boston. He's not into practice. He's not a grander. He's not into the community. He's an ISO guy. I don't know anybody anything. He's just an unbelievable basketball, brilliant, solo act. He's very much a cappello. I don't feel the harmony. Steph feels like Silicon Valley. Duncan felt like the system. He felt like pop. He felt like family. Even after the loss last night, Kyrie just feels like he's just his own guy doing his own thing, and it just doesn't fit. In general, what kind of what kind of things are you looking for, I guess, in your life? Um, and what kind of things, kind of situations would be a positive situation that you want to be in when you... I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm just trying to make it back to Boston first, you know, safely. Um, and get to see my family, decompress, you know, do what human beings do. Kyrie also has something I would call the number one pick syndrome. John Wall's got it. Kyrie's got it. Blake Griffin had it. Iverson had it. D. Rose. Once you're the number one pick, you see yourselves as a one. And the truth is, Blake Griffin's not a one. He's a two. John Wall's a two. Kyrie's a two. Derek Rose's a two. Iverson is a one if he's willing to play well with others. But when you're picked number one in the world, to the world's best basketball league, most number one picks are not Magic and LeBron. They've got all sorts of flaws. They'll develop emotionally and physically into a better player. But there's been a lot of number one picks who were really overskilled twos. Wall, Kyrie, Rose, Blake, Iverson, and they all had the same dilemma, and it wasn't a lack of talent. They didn't play well with others. The number one pick syndrome. They see themselves elevated above everyone coming into the league. Forget once they're there. They see themselves from day one. I'm a number one pick. Therefore, I have to be a number one guy. Kyrie's not. He doesn't have the personality for it. You could argue he doesn't have the size for it. Historically, Steph Curry's a very unique scoring small point guard that wins a title. I just don't feel like Kyrie fits here. I thought he would. I thought he was kind of the, 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 the icing on the cake, the great closer. They had the coach. They had the cast. They had the closer. It just doesn't work. It's okay. By the way, not the end of the world. He's got options. There'd be a lot of bidders. Not everybody works everywhere. Drew Brees didn't work with the uh, San Diego Chargers. He worked, he, boy, Drew Brees feels like New Orleans. That's okay. Not everybody works everywhere. The first place you go is not always the best place you go. First marriage, not always the best marriage. But I, I thought even after the game, sitting at the end of the bench, sort of indifferent, I was wrong. It just doesn't work. Good news is he's got a bunch of options. Coming up next, LeBron doesn't. What I've heard from what can only be called a circus 
with the Los Angeles Lakers. That's coming up. As any coach, as any GM, general manager will tell you, the foundation of a great team is great talent. Not a surprise, teams dedicate so much time and effort 